I'm Anthony Thaxton. Today on Southern Sketches, we're traveling back in time over 10 years to these vintage programs that I produced in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Now we traveled across the South sketching and painting as we went. I think you're gonna enjoy the subject matter. So stay tuned right now for a vintage encore presentation of Southern Sketches. Today on Southern Sketches, we'll do a painting of really high caliber. Stick with us. We're traveling the South and sketching as we go. It's time for Southern Sketches with Anthony Thaxton. Hi and welcome again to Southern Sketches. I'm Anthony Thaxton. We're joining you from the studios here at First Baptist Church of Hattiesburg and we appreciate you tuning in. Now today, I need to be honest with you, I'm not much of a hunter. I'm not much with guns, but my family is. My in-laws are, my, my dad, my brother. And I know a good many people around Hattiesburg love guns and gun shows and all that sort of thing. But I do love history, so I thought what we could do to tie those interests together, I went to the old Capitol Museum in Jackson and I took a photograph of an old Civil War revolver. So we're going to paint that today and kind of bridge the gap with interest here. And so all you hunters out there and gun lovers, today's episode is for you. So we're going to get right into it. We've already completed our sketch. You can see my palette is a mess. This is a little bit more detailed drawing than I normally do for um, working on a, a watercolor. A lot of times I will just sketch in not quite as many details. With this subject matter, with trying to get it to look pretty close to the gun, I've got it a little more detailed than I normally would. The technique we're using here is called wet and wet, I'm putting down some color, and then while it's still wet, I'm mixing some more color right next to it, and it bleeds together and creates a, a gradient where when that dries, it will be a nice and smooth look in these shadow areas here on the photograph you can see you see a lot of, of, of different colors there that metallic surface of the revolver is reflecting the light of the things around it and as I said I took this photograph in a in the old Capitol Museum in Jackson okay just a second I took it in the Old Capitol Museum in Jackson, and uh, there, there, the lighting in the museum, they've got a lot of things around the, the object there, and it's reflecting a lot of those colors and images around, around the gun. So the light and the color, as you see in the photograph, uh, there, there are blues in this shadow area don't have to make shadow just uh, a black area it can make it an interesting variety of colors you can I don't, I don't even use black anywhere in the painting I, I don't use black paint or white paint for a white area like the highlight on the on the barrel of that revolver uh, on the chamber there you you see the the highlight um, I'm leaving the highlight I'm painting around I'm gonna add a little clear water to smooth out those edges I'm using my brush my, my brush like a like a tool there scraping around and that's leaving that highlight so for white paint uh, instead of using white paint I use the white of the paper and and paint around that uh, that makes because watercolor is transparent you can fade these areas out and create these nice um, illuminations and instead of using black paint 
I use uh, a mixture of dark colors like this. I use the dark blue, it's a Prussian blue, and then adding in some, uh, adding in some violet, some dark violet areas, and smoothing those out just a little bit. But you, you can create some really neat effects and create some interesting shadow areas that have some color, some life to them. It might be exaggerating it a little bit, but if you just use, when I first started painting, I would use these dark blacks for these shadow areas, and and the, the, my paintings seem dead. And uh, by studying Walter Anderson paintings and studying White Waters paintings, John Singer Sargent started realizing how they would handle shadow areas and how they would handle things. And then I began to look and I, I taught myself to see those areas. Uh, and I went to college studying art at Mississippi College and they taught me those things as well. I don't want to get carried away on some of this detail work. It's it's in the picture and it's pretty prominent. And and for a piece of hardware like this, you you do need um, to include that. But at the same time, uh, I don't have to draw all the way around each one. I'm gonna try to leave it as loose as I can, although it's not very loose at all. But still trying to give it a feel of of interesting color to make it as interesting as I can. I started this picture there, right on, uh, I'm not sure what you would call that, the, the chamber or whatever that is, the revolving thing, um, looks really interesting to me and that's the uh, focal part of the picture and then everything else I work around that so I'm kind of starting there and work my way out. As you'll see in this episode, I know so little about guns, so I'm going to be limited with uh, my narration here. Now the Civil War was one of, one of the deadliest wars in our, actually the deadliest war in our, our nation's history. I think up to a point it was it had as many deaths as all of the other wars that we have been in combined. Let's see. Going to I'm I'm adding these areas here. I'm trying to keep one shape going. I'm trying to paint as much as I can around this this one area trying to connect and fan out in both directions but keep this color going uh, but the Civil War was so deadly because of 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 weapons like this uh, weapons that would fire repeatedly and a, a lot of the a lot of the infantry soldiers were still using the single loaded muskets but the uh, introduction around this time of repeating revolvers and rifles, uh, it changed the look of warfare because people could, wouldn't have to stop and reload like you would with a musket and you could keep firing and keep firing. So the fatalities were much greater than say the Revolutionary War or the War of 1812. Um, Guns are a fascinating subject to me. I'm, here in the South, it is guns are so um, so common, so commonplace. My my son is five years old, and al already people talk of well, when will you get him his first gun? And I'm thinking first gun. My dad has a really neat gun, which is a, a 22 rifle. It's this tiny little gun, and it was made in 1905. 
It's a really, really beautiful thing. It was passed down to his dad, who used to shoot squirrels with it. Look at the color there on the barrel with adding in a, a little orange or reddish area there, just breaking up that, giving it some reflection. It helps give that feel. Wouldn't necessarily think that that would help give the feel of it being a metallic surface, but it does. It helps with some of these reflections, a little touch of yellow here and there. Not only does that add variety, but it does give the impression of being this cold steel metallic surface reflecting the things around it. I'm going to keep working on this with the small details. I'm, I'm leaving the background basically until, until the end. Really enjoying working here on the, the side of this firearm. And I like how this is going here. It's uh, the the leather pouch that is on underneath the the gun is is an orange color, and that's going to complement nicely these rich blue areas that we have going on here. So I think it's going to be a nice a nice picture. Working on the handle of the gun, these gold metallic surfaces are a little trickier to do. It's not that terribly vibrant in the photograph, so we're going to try to spruce that up a little bit, but um, Got, still focusing on lights and darks. Mainly that's that's what, what I do. It really doesn't matter the color that you're using. We could take blue paint, for instance, and do this whole painting with one color, just blue and water. And for the lights and darks, you would just add more water to make it lighter or less water to make it darker. But the whole concentration is totally on lights and darks. Like we said earlier, it's not often that we do a painting of this high caliber. So I just wanted to use that joke one more time. We're gonna take a break and we'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm Anthony Thaxton. I hope you're enjoying these special encore presentations of vintage Southern Sketches programs that I did back over 10 years ago. If you'd like to find out more, see additional programs, find out other offerings that we have and new exciting art releases, visit us at thaxtonstudios.com. We have lots of interesting artists, we have world-renowned illustrators and painters who are sharing what they know, and I think you'll find some interesting stuff, so be sure and visit our website at BaxtonStudios.com. And now back to the vintage program of Southern Sketches. We're back visiting the old days, painting a painting of an old Civil War revolver. There's a lot of Civil War history that happened here in the South, and Mississippi in particular, especially the Vicksburg Campaign. Um, the fall of Vicksburg divided the Confederacy and led to the, the fall of the Confederacy. So uh, those of you that like history, this is for you. We, we have completed the handle here. Just again, wet and wet paint, letting the color bleed together. And working with some of the shadow work here underneath the revolver. Museum lighting is tricky because a lot of times you've got shadows coming from both directions. They have lights on both sides and it's not like setting up a still life where you're just having one light source. The important thing is just trying to paint what you see. If you see different shadows, you see, and it's, it's kind of basically one light source there. But if you did see, if you do see different shadows, you do see different environments, you try to paint what you see. 
again, a lot of a lot of students that I used to teach would would try to start painting, and they would look at a person and they say, "Okay, I'm going to draw this person." And they look down and never look back up at the person again. Well, that's not drawing that part. You're drawing a person, but you're not drawing that particular person at that time of day and that lighting at that angle. You have to keep looking up. Um, it's good to try to look at what you're painting more than your painting itself because you're, you're trying to familiarize yourself. And again, I'm not drawing this leather pouch underneath the gun just a leather pouch I'm uh, not making it up I'm trying to look at what I see in the photograph or in the object before you and and then I'm I'm trying to capture that on paper because see that's a really odd shape this leather pouch it's an odd um, it's it's an odd configuration to me but if I'm going to paint it I, I don't even think about that all I'm looking at are lights and darks and the shapes here and as we're piecing this thing together and starting to quickly add some color there, notice already how this orange color of the leather pouch, this orange and brown and reds, basically warm colors, are complementing this cold colors of this gun. And I like that very much. Wet and wet paint, just letting it bleed together. We'll do some details afterwards. This is a different kind of subject matter than I normally do. Like I said, this is very southern, so it's appropriate for southern sketches, but um, this type of historical object I don't do a lot. Now, I love going to museums. Um, I went to New Mexico on a chaperoning a youth trip one time, and one of my favorite parts of the trip was going to a little museum and I had my sketchbook with me and I did little little sketches of these southwestern historical objects it was it was a lot of fun for me and when I come home I've I've got a a record of this trip I've got a a memory and and it's kind of neat sketching in person more personable than just a, a photograph although here I am working from a photograph I'm not opposed to that either We're going to take another commercial break. After that, we're going to wrap up this painting. Stick with us. Hi, I'm Anthony Thaxton. I hope you're enjoying these special encore presentations of vintage Southern Sketches programs that I did back over 10 years ago. If you'd like to find out more, see additional programs, find out other offerings that we have and new exciting art releases, visit us at ThaxtonStudios.com. We have lots of interesting artists. We have world-renowned illustrators and painters who are sharing what they know, and I think you'll find some interesting stuff, so be sure and visit our website at ThaxtonStudios.com. And now back to the vintage program of Southern Sketches. Welcome back, Southern Sketches. I'm Anthony Thaxton. We're doing a painting of an old Civil War revolver and we're about to wrap it up. As we get into this, I want you to remember that you're looking, concentrating on those lights and darks. I know I sound like a broken record, but the lights and the darks are, are basically, to me, everything. The value, uh, because the color that you're using, a lot of people get hung up on words. There's a school of artists uh, in North Mississippi who uh, they don't like the word value they concentrate just on color oh we're just looking at color but to me when I say value I am concentrating on color as well um, but again it really doesn't matter which color as long as it's a 
a dark color here on the edge of this or in that shadow area it needs to be darker than the light area and if you're using blue or a, a black color it doesn't matter to paint and look at these lighter and darker areas. Notice how smoothly the leather area, all those colors I mixed together, how smoothly those those fade out. Now this leather pouch has a texture to it and I'm gonna add some I'm gonna add some highlight work to to give it some texture but for right now I have to let that kind of dry so that it will not all bleed totally together. Those colors are blending together to, to give me the gold buckle or clasp or whatever that is. Again, if you concentrate too much on exactly what it is you're painting, in a painting like this you get stumped up because I don't know what all these things are. I'm just concentrating on these shapes and lights and darks, so it doesn't matter what this area is underneath here. If I see it in my photograph or in the object before me, we just paint it. Letting the colors bleed together. The, the background here is a real light green, almost white color, but a off off white. I'm going to play that up a little bit to give a little more, I'm going to fudge here a little bit to give a little more color in the background. I don't want it to um, be just a white a white background. I'm I'm making that darker than what it is. I'm making the color richer just because I want an interesting background and I know it's going to be more dramatic in my picture. And when it's all said and done, this picture is all that matters because I'm using the, the thing, the object as a starting place. But now, as in a lot of paintings of mine, the background can be a little looser, a little more suggested and still not losing the impact of what this object is. I have left a, an area under the gun here that I did not... As in this episode, we've been under the gun. Womp, womp, womp. Uh, I've left an area here that I did not paint. Interesting shadow area. See up under the gun and it... it really looks like there's you're seeing some of the background through underneath there in the shadow and we're really we're, we're really getting pretty close here to the end of this thing, the bottom I'm going to finish very quickly. Notice when I'm painting a shadow on top of this where I did not leave it, it watercolor is transparent so you're seeing through this color and you're seeing the color underneath it. See how that looks different than the shadow up underneath the handle of the gun, the trigger over there where I, I did pure blue on top of the on top of the white paper so you're not seeing it mix so it has a different color than the blue mixed with those warm colors over there. Either one is right and probably would have felt better had I done them both the same way. 
So this is pure shadow, pure rich blue color straight on top of white paper. So it's mixing with that white, you can see through it and giving that real rich blue color. And then I'll come back and add the bluish green around it, giving that shadow area. some sort of handle or buckle here. And we're just about going to wrap this thing up. It's amazing you spend a lot of time on these detail areas and then the rest of the painting goes so quickly. Look at the rough texture there on the leather pouch and we're going to have to do a little bit there but the background goes so quickly because I'm just basically blocking in some some color making that come alive and I'm just suggesting the details here on this flask or whatever that is at the bottom but adding some texture on that leather bag and then we have a a final a final work of art And that's how we do a painting of a historical object here on Southern Sketches. You know, back in the public school system when I would do a painting like this, the kids would say, oh, you can't do a painting of a gun. So it's not a gun, it's a historical object. For all of us here at TV6 and Southern Sketches, I'm Anthony Thaxton. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.